Hey everybody, this is the AJ Nava, and this is my inaugural episode of Let's Talk About Wrestling. Basically, I'm going to take one or two, three topics of professional wrestling from the, the week that just happened and talk about it. So the first topic I, I wanted to talk about was Impact coming to Destination America. I actually watched that episode of Impact and it's the same damn thing, basically. It's the same damn show. I dislike it very much. Uh, according to people at Impact or at Destination America, they want to take the show in a different direction. That was that was uh, something that was talked about after Impact debuted. It felt like the same show that they always put on. I mean, first of all, we had a, an unneeded title change with Austin Aries. I had no clue why there was a title change. Austin Aries doesn't need the X Division title. I think his t title win last year was ridiculous. I think the X Division is a good way to bring in new guys that could be someday be the future of the company. We had the return of Awesome Kong, which I think is was a really cool I idea to bring back Awesome Kong, because I like Awesome Kong. I really wish that when she went to the WWE as Karma, they would have been able to do more with her, but obviously a lot of things got in the way with her WWE career, and it just didn't happen, and it really sucks, because I think she would have just been amazing in the WWE, and it would have really helped the Divas division, but no, we... We have her back in TNA, which I'm totally for. And because she's one of the best female wrestlers out there. And she's lost a good amount of weight, which I'll hopefully means she's much better in the ring than she already was. Um, and of course, the TNA of Swerve, someone changed sides. I haven't watched, uh, I'll be honest, I haven't watched TNA um, since Bobby Lashley first won the world title so I don't know if they're trying to do something with Eric Young or they were you know they were moving Eric Young into a different into this uh, feud basically I don't know why Eric Young turned heel I don't get it I don't understand it but I guess for a guy who hasn't watched Impact Wrestling in weeks months and might make sense to people who actually watch it so you know if if i missed anything go ahead and tell me i'm gonna attempt to watch impact wrestling more often but i don't promise anything but yeah it it felt like the same thing which i was guessing it was gonna be the same thing i just didn't know it was gonna feel like watching impact wrestling i was hoping with the new channel and all this other stuff that they were might have been gone going with something different and i hope with them making that that you know the statement regarding they want to go and you know they want to do things differently i hope that's true because i really want a competitor a true competitor to wwe will tna do that i have no clue will global force wrestling do that i have no clue we need competition in the professional wrestling in uh, in professional wrestling to, so we get better product and WWE isn't going to push the boundaries unless somebody can step up and make the kind of money they're making right now or make a noise in the in in, in this industry in that industry so you never know the second thing i want to talk about is elimination chamber it will no longer take place. Last year was last year's Elimination Chamber, and this year we're getting WWE Fastlane. Now, name aside, because really the pay-per-view names don't matter, uh, I think this is a good thing, because the Elimination Chamber is a, has become very stale, in my opinion. Doing it every year over and over and over again has really just hurt the Elimination Chamber. The Elimination Chamber should be a match that that ends ends a feud or ends a storyline, kind of like the Hell in the Cell should do. So, 
I'm 100% okay with Elimination Chamber being taken out. I'm 100% fine with it. Doesn't bother me whatsoever. I'm actually happy because I've been wanting them to get rid of the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view for a while now. As for the name Vaseline, like I said, doesn't bother me. I don't really care about the pay-per-view names. I just care that the pay-per-views are good. And our, the B pay-per-views haven't been that great lately. Because I think, honestly, because the whole network thing. And I'm, I don't know. It's it's just going to be the pay-per-view between WrestleMania and and the Royal Rumble, basically. Like No Way Out was. Which, you know, if they, if they brought back No Way Out, I, I wouldn't mind that. Maybe they could have just done that instead of calling it Fastlane No Way Out. I can see the end of gimmick pay-per-views happening. I hope they do that with Held in a Cell. I hope they do that with TLC. You know, I hope they do that with Extreme Rules. It's like, get rid of the gimmicky pay-per-views. Name them something different so you don't focus on the gimmick. You focus on the rivalries and the matches. And that's just me personally. And like I said, Fastlane is just going to be another pay-per-view basically. And honestly, I don't think we need a pay-per-view between the Rumble and WrestleMania. I know it's kind of been a tradition because No Way Out came in and all this other stuff, but why not have the Royal Rumble, have that build of the Royal Rumble winner and the competitor going into WrestleMania? There's no real need for a pay-per-view in the middle of WrestleMania, you can build up rivalry, a longer rivalry, because right after Elimination Chamber, they have to start new rivalries. And especially if you're gonna bring back The Undertaker and all this other stuff, you only have a couple of weeks to build up rivalries, and I don't like that. I want, I want at least a month or two worth of build up before the match, and it makes you want to watch that match more. But hey, I don't, I don't really think we're gonna get that anytime soon. I think they're gonna stick with what they got okay and the final piece of news that everyone you know everyone's been talking about the whole internet's been buzzing about blowing up twitter and facebook and all that other stuff is finally randy savage is going into the hall of fame now before i get into my own personal feelings about this let's talk about the two diff the two main camps of this there are the people who are just excited. They're happy. Randy Savage is finally going into the Hall of Fame. Everyone's ecstatic. Everyone's happy. At least in their opinion, you know, they can't. They just cannot wait. And then there's the other other group of people who I've noticed that they think it's too late. You know, they should have done it while he was alive. It sucks that he can't. You know that he's dead and that maybe that they should put him in the Hall of Fame. This. Now, how I feel about it, I'm glad. I'm glad Randy Savage, in my opinion, deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. He deser He's deserved it for a very long time. I know that there are some behind-the-scenes reasons that he wasn't in ever, hadn't been inducted yet. So I'm glad that the WWE is moving past all their prejudices of of, of certain professional wrestlers and getting them into the Hall of Fame. I'm glad that guys like Bruno and Randy Savage and all these other guys are going to get into the Hall of Fame because the, w the politics of WWE are changing. It's like with Sting being in the officially being in the WWE now. It's it's good. It's good that the politics are changing. And as Vince, whenever Vince steps down and Triple H takes over, I think the politics will change a lot better. Um, because, you know, Triple H, for what people say about Triple H, I can understand Triple H and his, and, you know, him catering to his favorites and, and such, but I think he is more, I think he's more realistic and he'll be a better boss once Vince McMahon's gone. Vince McMahon was good when he was good, and I think as the times change, Vince McMahon hasn't changed. And I think that's the problem. But as for Randy Savage, I'm I'm I cannot wait because that is going to be great 
to finally say that he is in the Hall of Fame. I mean, nobody... I can't think of many people who deserve it as much as he does. He is probably one of my absolute favorite WWE and my one of my favorite Intercontinental Champions of all time. Uh, as a kid, I wanted to be Randy Savage. He's one of the reasons I wanted to become a professional wrestler. You just can't honestly list the things that are great about him because there's just too many. You know, he was one of the best performers ever. So, absolutely fantastic in my opinion. Well, that'll do it for my first episode of Let's Talk About Wrestling. I hope this will become just one of my favorite shows to do. And I hope to get a lot of feedback from this because, you know, I love wrestling. It's one of my... I watch wrestling every week. I'm a huge wrestling mark. I can't help it. <laughs> so, you know, feel free to give me any feedback in the comments. Tell me what you liked, what you disliked, what you think I should do different. You know, because I, I, I want feedback. Because feedback's always important. So... This has been me. This has been the AJ Nava, obviously, if you're listening to this video. And I will be back next week with more topics to talk about.